my bad y'all hey guys it's julesy um hey guys it's julesy i'm using the new dashboard let me know if everything's working okay because it looks a little bit different than i'm used to you know there's always a delay y'all know i'm always late but <laughs> This is so weird. Let me know if the sound and everything works. It's kind of low-key going to be a mukbang pop snark because uh, a bitch would like to eat right now. Um, and we're going to look at my dashboard because there's a delay on y'all dashboard. Ooh, 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 ooh. I haven't put lashes on yet, but we're going to take care of that. Uh, so the food, I made some ribs to grill and my complex is not working. I paid too damn much money for this apartment, but that's why I'm moving. And I got some collard greens and some cornbread I just made in the skillet. Girl, we be faking like we can cook. We just don't like doing it. Um, and then my drink is, so Coca-Cola has a Georgia peach Coke that I decided to try. It actually tastes pretty good with Japanese whiskey. So a clink, 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 and a clank. Welcome to Pop Snark. Is this number 52? Am I doing it more regularly? My goodness, my gracious. Hmm. Let's check the comments and make sure y'all can actually like hear me. Okay, the sound. Oh, you know what? You know how refreshing it is to like actually have your ish together? Girl, that is so. Shout out to you for the $10 holla. Thank you. you. Elias always come through every time I'm on live. You really be supporting. I feel that. I feel that when I pay my rent. Thank you. Um, We are... I need to put something in this Slack cohort because these girls are not, they're not responsive. We got these book club shit together. We do the pod, I gotta send, I think I have an assistant now and I gotta send them some stuff to get the podcast together, but we are actively working. What's up? Hey, random structure. Cameron, I, wait, wait, I didn't, I didn't see you in so long, I done forgot your first name. Cameron? Am I gonna see you at YouTube Black? Did you RSVP, nigga? Am I gonna see you in a month? Um, all right, let's get into these pop snark topics. I do want to say, I've been seeing people commenting. Well, I saw Kim on her live. you like, why does she have trolls? The block button, my block setup is Trump tight. You, can't, you just can't see the trolls. They exist. They just all blocked already. Okay, that's why we don't have them over here. All right. So, what's the first topic of today? Let's sip on this. Actually, I set the first topic up so that I could put my lashes on. Wait, hold on. Got my lashes. We're going to put these suckers on while we talk about the first topic. Now, you know, I tiptoed over into the wrong section of YouTube these past couple of weeks. My bad. I apologize. Well, fuck all that. But, you know, didn't mean to be over there. Uh, and one of the comments that I've been getting a lot is, well, you think you're going to get rid of patriarchy in your lifetime? No, but I do think we can lessen the blow of it. But look, if I'm going to participate in patriarchy, if I'm going to do that, I like my patriarchy to look like the baby. baby. As long as it comes with the baby, we cool. That's what I can do, okay? But... Uh, this is the baby stand account, not the baby, it's my baby. And, uh... Oh, I hope my stuff is actually working. Hold on. It's a, video it's a very topic. special day today. Oh, you know what happened? My Hi. brother. Okay. Hi. This is why I can't see anything. Do, 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 Gotta drop the video capture to the bottom. Oh, no, my lash is gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna uh, dry out in a minute. It's okay. We'll just apply a, diff a second layer. Um, here we go. Because it inserted this the second way. Oh, this is not the worst technical difficulty. There we go. It is a very special day today. My brother. <laughs> so fine and shit. Join this shit right so okay. This it is, is the the kind of patriarchy. Like, if you're talking yes, like sir. this, I'm going to yes, talk about right? Look yeah, at the game. Yes, Take a look at the game. Don't play us. We are here now. Good work of the gang. Don't play us. I can't do something like this. Of course. Of course. And I show them where your stick is. Gang. It is a very billion dollar baby crew or his entourage. 
Now, I don't necessarily co-sign the violence he has participated in. They be a little ruckus, see? But these niggas is fine, okay? The little, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. You still can't see it. Let's do this. This little, this, this I'm one little clip, clip this, this somebody. clip, that's the kind of patriarchy I like. If you serve it to me like the baby, I might leave y'all alone, okay? I will stop talking about it then. If it looks like that. That's what I sell my soul for. Commodify the fuck out of my activism for the baby. It's not the baby. It's my baby. Um, I even love... Okay, now I have one lash on. Wow, we look attractive. I even love the uh, video that he has with J. Cole. I think it's really, really nice. And I don't know why my pictures aren't showing up anymore. Oh, this is why. Haha. -ha. Here we go. This video. Now, this is a song. They put out a new song. Ooh, am I out of focus when I lean back? <laughs> Fix it. Uh, this is from the Dreamville album. It's J. Cole Lute, who's from West Charlotte, I believe, because he shouts out BD4s, which is in West, in West Charlotte. Um, and The Baby, who I also believe is from West Charlotte. And they shot the whole... Now, these all three niggas is from North Carolina, and they shot the video in the Bronx. I feel like if you have three niggas that can rap from North Carolina, should you not have shot the video in North Carolina? They could have did that shit in Durham, Raleigh, Charlotte. They could have got something colorful. You could have posted up in front of one of Wesley's murals or some shit. There's art all over Charlotte. I mean, I will say the projects don't look as nice or as interesting. Maybe nice isn't the right word. They don't look as interesting in the South. Well, in, I don't know. Does anyone else have black ass friends that like, when they come to visit you, always want to see what the hood looks like. I have I have one homegirl's now husband. Every time they come to see me, they've come to see me in Dallas and now in Charlotte. He wants to see what the hood looks like in the city that I live in. And I think in in Charlotte, it's just houses. Like even the public housing here is just like little like square brick houses. It doesn't necessarily look like what the projects and public housing looks like in the Northeast. So I'm always like, I mean, we've driven by it. You just didn't realize you drove by it. Desi. But I don't actually think BD4 is his hood. It's just old black folks over there. And they, they putting the light rail over there now too. Okay. Have we stand enough for the, ba the baby? Is we over it? I guess. All right. Next topic. Kenya Moore is getting divorced. Now, my spicy take on this. Let me move from behind the picture while I put my other lash on. My spicy take on this is that um, no one's surprised. And it's not because we dis I dislike Kenya. I mean, I think she's done very well being the villain purposefully on Real Housewives of Atlanta. So I have no sympathy for her because I feel like that's the role that she put herself in. But um, she... I feel like her and both Portia have done the same thing here. They wanted the baby. And as I have said a million times over, we need to give room for diverse representation of various relationships. And I feel like women like Kenya feed into the narrative of wanting to be perceived a particular way. Ain't she an Aquarius? Mm -hmm. Okay, she ain't shit. But uh, I love y'all Aquarians. Um, I feel like she got married for the image of it. And so I'm not surprised that they're getting divorced because she got the kid. She got what I, she wanted. And I hope they have a very fulfilling co-parenting relationship, which, with the, which, it, uh, which is what they could have had without the marriage, without the entanglement in the first place. But they can afford to lose money on a wedding. So, you know, best of luck to her. But um, is, is anyone out there surprised that, and, uh, you know, correct. Portia is absolutely, I mean, did Portia and Dennis get married? I, I don't feel like Portia and Dennis actually like each other. I feel like Portia, and I, I don't blame these women, and I, I keep, you know, everything's going to be colored by what's happened in the past few weeks here on YouTube for me, right? But it's like, look, if you want to partner with a man who is financially secure and can provide for your child, by all means, sis. And that's why I think she had Dennis. That baby with Dennis. Now, in my book, I'm not risking having a child with a funny looking nigga. Because them funny looking features, no comment. But, <clears throat> mm hmm lash not even all the way on. But, love your child, sis. They gonna break up. It's okay. I actually don't know why Portia has such a hard time dating. Because according to all the dating advice that I've seen here on YouTube, like, sis, she's highly feminine. The body is snatched. 
She knows how to giggle at a nigga, even when he ain't saying shit, so. Why is Portia having such a hard time finding a, a partner? Moving on to more dating shenanigans. Now the title of this video says dating advice is always snake oil because I'm actually gonna do a video. I'm gonna do a whole video on Fantasia's commentary and her husband Kendall's Moore's, Kendall Taylor's commentary. But I have some questions for y'all because what I've seen thus far of the commentary largely around Portia, I mean not Portia, Fantasia, whether you agree with her or not, I feel like a lot of the knocks come at our idea of who Fantasia is, right? In that it was just a few years ago that she was embroiled in a lawsuit because she was a mistress to some nigga she met in a 7-Eleven out here in Charlotte who happened to be a football player. And you know, the South still got some archaic laws around ad adultery and stuff because the Bible. You know, we have Billy Graham Highway, Parkway, whatever that is out here. The Billy Graham Library is out here in Charlotte. So girl, just imagine what the laws are out here. Um... And the fact that she just learned how to read a few years ago, no shade, no tea. I actually really like Fantasia. And so we can stay away from the like the bias jokes about her lack of access until she became wealthy. Um, because from what I've heard of people that have worked with her here in Charlotte, nothing but glowing commentary about her and her brothers and family here who are all in the music industry here in Charlotte. I've heard very positive things about the Barino family. However, I think because more so because of what we think of Fantasia and her voice and the way she talks and uh, the fact that she did very publicly get caught up as a mistress to an NFL player and then had the wife sue hit her and then she ended up mothering a child with the married man. Um, so she now has two kids that that's how people are reacting to Fantasia's commentary. Am I, am I right or wrong about that? Because I've seen a lot and not, and I'm saying this because I see a lot of comments about her being the breadwinner in the household because there's really not much information out there about her husband. Like I looked up his LLC, the website is down, the tw it, Twitter and Instagram were inactive, the most I could find were like pictures of their courier vans. So there's really no idea of like what tax bracket he actually falls in. So there's an assumption that Fantasia is the breadwinner, but is that actually, is the lash on? Nope, it's coming off. We are gonna have to do this cause I can't be keep looking down at this. Wait, what do y'all say? Okay, let me look at, over at the comments. This is a pop snark. Why are you asking about my dreams? <laughs> Thank you naturally, Isha. I appreciate the donation. Uh, the baby is not Nigerian, but his manager or one of his closest partners, I don't, like, I want to assume the guy's his manager, he is definitely Nigerian. Um, hence the Nigerian attire at his Nigerian wedding. Um, I think this is as best as the lashes are going to look right now. Okay. Um, but I'm going to do a whole video on my commentary on Fantasia, but I was, I've been trying to figure out where is this idea coming from that her, she's the breadwinner in her family and that he's not at least meeting her or I don't know. I will just say this, um, Headship does not equate leadership. And y'all already know which way I lean on this. I am not of the opinion that black women or women in general, I just, this, this is where I'm at. This is, this is, cause I'm gonna do a whole video, I keep saying this, but this is where I'm at on the overarching theme of it. I don't agree with any sort of dating advice being pointed at black women as though it, we, how we choose to date is going to save the black community. When we start talking about liberation, that's where I get icky about it. I don't actually think anything she said isn't things that we haven't heard from, of before. And I think all sides of the dating spectrum of advice, whether you're pro-black feminism, whether you're claiming to be anti-black feminism and a womanist, even though, hi, Alice Walker, she was friends with the Comedy River Collective, but whatever, y'all read history books. But what I'm saying is, regardless of whatever, the side of the black woman like dating advice spectrum, pool you fall on. I think there's things you agree with and there's things you don't agree with in what she was saying and subsequently then what her husband said. But I will say for me, I don't believe in pivoting dating advice as if to burden black women with dating advice as if the way we partner is going to somehow uplift the black community out of the systems of oppression that we currently exist in. 
uh, that's that on that. And we'll do a video. I'm working on it. Hopefully, it'll be up by Monday. Okay? And this is her husband. She got her light, bright, funky looking Negro. They cute together. You know what? I'm happy for Fantasia. I think you, what I think is shade, so I'm just going to keep it to myself and eat my collard greens. <laughs> so we've been talking about the presidential Democrat candidates for a while now. Um, I'm still going to wait before I do a whole video on this because there's still 19 of them. It's too many of them. But shout out to Bill de Blasio finally catching a hit that don't nobody like his ass and dropping out. <laughs> Deuces. He can go back to being the mayor nobody likes in New York. It's kind of crazy though because de Blasio for like I think there is a way that he could have gone about his mayorship in New York where he could be more well received. But he's just a doofus. Dude, dude is just dumb, but bye. All right, can we talk about Queen Sugar real quick? Did anybody watch this last season? I'm <coughs> trying to chew this pork chop. It's not a pork chop. It's a rib. It's a country style rib. And I seasoned it so damn good. I'm sitting here like, wow, bitch, you did that. <laughs> um, still hate cooking though. So, this season of Queen Sugar, um, Queen Sugar is still my favorite, most boring show on TV because because <clears throat> I'm trying to read through the comments, see what y'all saying. Y'all, y'all right, re reacting, retracting y'all statements. What's going on here? But um, with this season of the show, oh, let's talk about it being boring. Okay. It is a boring television show, but I love it because I love the mundaneness of it. I think, you know, I sat through so many white TV shows. Where I'm like, this shit is so silly. It's so mundane. It's, there's nothing wildly interesting about it. Like, hello, friends in Seinfeld. But white people love him or love those shows. And I think we have every right to have black shows that show the beauty in the mundaneness of black life. Now this season definitely hit the soap opera stride. They were like, we're competing with, well, they're not competing, but we are on, we are on Greenleaf now. Well, Greenleaf is on the network now. We got high, high drama. We got to net it up a little bit, right? Net it up. So it got a little bit more dramatic, but I will say with the drama, I cannot stand Nova Bordelon. Is that how you say they like? You know, I'm mispronouncing everybody's name. I'm going to do a whole video about Lizzo just so I can make up for the fact that I be calling her Lizzo. But this season was hitting. It was so hitting because I was so, like, me and my homegirls have been texting all weekend about this show. Like, are we ready for next season, the biracial wars? Homegirl from uh, Underground. Underground, the chip from Underground. Ooh, the the character, Esty, Ersty. What what was her name on Underground? The light skinned house slave, uh, Journey Somali Mama. And I I'm not mad at any of the criticism that Queen Sugar is boring. It's slow moving. There is an arc to it, but I love just the realness of it. I love that it's not like, you know, you don't really get your happy endings. You don't really get the, ooh, the villain. It's like, it's like real, real life. Like you can, we've all experienced some facet of these, these, uh, these characters in real life. You know, uh, Charlie Bordelon's son coming back with the fuck boy haircut after a summer in Paris. We see you out here. I'm happy though that he's so respectful of his uh, girlfriend. And I'm, I, I think that's a good like model. I think, it's, I actually think Queen Sugar is a show you could watch. Yes, Ernestine, thank y'all. I actually think it's a show that you can watch with at least teenagers. Um, because there's really good representation across the board of like, you know, how wealth really works, how hard it is for black people to raise up out of um, poverty and lift up their family and how parts of us can access wealth. And it's still, we can't save everyone. You know, with Charlie's whole fight with the sugar factory or yeah, the sugar cane factory and thinking that she can come in and just write a check and resolve everything. Um, but this season was hitting. Nova though wrote a book this season. 
um, her book comes out and her book ends up being about her family, like intimate details about her family. And she is profiting from it and getting all the awards and act, act, adulation. And I low key think there's so many like, I was trying to figure out who various characters were like hitting on in the publishing industry. Yeah, I made some cornbread with grits because <laughs> I got yellow grits in the crib and no cornmeal. But it's good. Um, but the book, like, it has details in it about Darla and her addiction and Bianca Lawson, Beyonce's bonus sister. That girl be acting her light skinned ass off. I be in there with all the feels for Darla. I didn't want her and Ralph Angel to get back together, but I understand. I was feeling that Ralph was finally having the feels for an identifiably black woman who was about her shit. I would have loved to see that flourish. But, um, you know, I think it's real. It's real that, like, I don't, I don't actually think that the relationship with the lawyer would have lasted long because I felt like Ralph was out of his league with her. But, uh, you know, I get the whole, the, the, no, the whole Darla's storyline. But... Yes, Tanisha, thank you for the, them five euros. Shout out to you. But Nova is very, very, like, I literally, wait, I texted that to my homegirl, the, that exact statement. Nova is so suffering. Let me pull up my text with Jessica. I said, Nova is so self-righteous. She doesn't think about anyone but herself. For me, it's about how she benefits from something that is ruining everyone else's life. And she has yet to offer any of the privilege she's coming to, to her family. And that's exactly it. She is, like, getting all these awards and all this attention and all these people are coming back into her life. And she's getting a second chance with very privileged and powerful people. And getting to use her own aut autonomy to decide whether or not she wants to stay connected to these people. So, like, getting back with the white cop. And but like Darla has whole relationships being ruined, and that jazz player she was dating with that dude kind of did look like Christian Scott to me, who was a jazz player in New Orleans, which is funny. Um, but he, uh, I get what he was saying. I don't think he was wrong in what he said to Darla about you know because of his own addiction, he can't necessarily be cl as close as he would like to be with her because she's teetering next to uh, what's it called when you uh. When you when you do it again, that word, uh, relapse. She was about to relapse, but I feel like if you if you've dealt with addiction and you know someone is teetering on relapse, then you should handle that with more care. I just thought it was very disrespectful the way he essentially did ghost her. She had to pop up on him and then in front of everyone, like I felt like he should he of all people should have more empathy and have more room to give her grace. But whatever. If you have not watched this season of Queen Sugar, I would this is actually a great season. Thank y'all all for helping me out with the world, because y'all about ten minutes behind me right now. But um yes. I, I would highly say go back and watch Queen Sugar. Like, stick with, it's a good show. It's good. And if you ain't got, it's like one of those, you put on your wash dishes, you do other things. You don't have to sit down and like watch every move of the show to get what's happening. Y'all gonna leave my grammatical lapses alone. All right. We gonna do a whole video on this shit too. We gotta talk about the H&M shit because it's popped off this morning on Twitter. And let me tell y'all, girl, <laughs> mm -mm. y'all showing a whole lot of y'all anti-blackness. Now, we, we done relaxed and gone back natural in less than six months, but let me tell y'all, y'all know I done did that video on textual discrimination. And, and I've talked about, it's low-key illicit, if you still have the link, you can watch it, but <clears throat> I told y'all. I told y'all about 2012, 2013, right? Y'all don't love 4C hair. We do not see it as inherently beautiful in all states. And I think things like this really challenge us to think, why do we look at this and say her hair looks a mess? What about this is so unappealing? Because, you know, I remember as a child begging my mother to put my hair in a ponytail and her telling me no my hair was too nappy to get into a singular ponytail and I had a relaxer I got a relaxer at six years old right 
And I used to be horrified. I ended up starting to go natural in middle school when I could start doing my own hair. And we took, we had swim. We had swimming lessons during gym in seventh grade. And I used to be horrified of having to get in that body of water, knowing that my hair was gonna nap up because I was transitioning out of my relaxer. Knowing that my roots were gonna look a lot similar to this and they were not gonna curl up like plenty of other black girls in my class. And that I was gonna get talked about, right? I just think it's so interesting that people are like, she needs to gel her edges down. She like, there's an idea that her hair is not brushed. Because there are grown women here, grown women here on YouTube who will sit and brush their hair and it will look like that. I see plenty of children. Them pictures of little girls coming home after a day, they go to school with their hair looking nice, come back with their hair looking just like that. That looked like a child has been on the playground. That's all that looked like. And in context of the other... Oh, I didn't mean to do that. In context of the other pictures, um, I actually think it looks good. Oh, that's the apology. So this is what the full ad on H&M looks like. All them kids look like they just came out the playground. They all look like they done been in school all day. They they did what they wanted with their hair. Their mama left, had they had walked out the house one way. And I absolutely that that little shot with the glasses. I love that. That little black girl is so she's so beautiful to me. And I'm so sad that so many of us y'all the same host telling Beyonce to brush blue ivy hair because. We just think that 4C hair in the equivalent state to all these other hairs looks so embarrassing. But all these kids look like they don't sweat it out their edges. But when the edges is a little bit curlier, when it's a little bit silkier, we ain't got all these complaints. And if anybody with my hair texture know good and god darn well, Eco Styler Gel is not sitting in your hair all day long. Okay? <laughs> look. That's why I love that Nicole Kayla girl. She really be having, I really feel like her memes really empower us to not be so subconscious about how people see us. And allowing ourselves to exist in our flaws. That meme of her, I don't put it in the thing. Let me see if I can pull the picture up. Let me put the picture in here. The uh, meme of her sitting on the couch looking at a nigga. This shit be having me crying. Okay? I love this. And we all done made that face looking exactly like that with our wig off. I might have put a wig on too. Dag, I forgot. I was trying to not be too late here today. <laughs> But I love it. What are y'all talking about with the girl? They do actually have... I mean... Her hair... I mean, we could argue about whether her edges are breaking off or not. That might come down to how our parents are taking care of the household. I also think, like, kids' hair grows at a different rate. This idea that everyone's going to have this super full, thick head of hair... Not every parent has the privilege of being able to sit down and care for their hair in a way that can really, you know, that we see the parents here on YouTube care for their hair. And this idea that her hair is dry, I mean, to be honest, unless 4C hair has like a glob of like greasy product in it, it typically doesn't look, look super, it doesn't really look moisturized unless you stretch the hair out. In our shrunken natural hair state, the hair is never going to look how we come to identify moisturized hair. Um, but I think I felt like H&M definitely clarified, they tweeted their comment, we truly believe that all kids should be allowed to be kids. The school age kids who model for us come to the photo studio in the afternoon after school and we aim for natural look, which reflects that. And I think, accurate. I do want to say, I feel like we need to be more careful about how we spin our outrage. Um, 
there's a lot of content here, even on like YouTube and Twitter. And I think outrage fuels marketing. But even here on YouTube, there's a lot of content that is focused on inspiring outrage because that's what get view gets views. We would rather watch content that's centered around drama and negativity than watch something that's centered around positivity. And I just want to, I want us to be a little bit more cautious about how we dole out our outrage. Ooh, excuse me. That hurt the chest. Mm. And not be so quick, you know, you know, think about, I always think now about getting context, right? Because I have a platform and I need to be careful with my words, but getting context, right? So if I see something, figure out where it's coming from, figuring out what it's a part of, figuring out what the, what the, cause we can take bits and pieces of things and spin out rage and get people all up in arms about stuff all day long. But we have to be more careful because there's, there's always context and you know, things can be taken out of context. You want some cornbread? Hmm. And we have to remember, a lot of this shade we done thrown at Blue Ivy and at Gabby Douglas. Remember back in the, what was it, the 2012 Olympics? No, 2016 Olympics? Girl, my years be off. I wrote a whole article about this for The Root. People coming for Gabby's hairline. It's like, yo, this girl is competing at the Olympics. You compete and then make it so your edges is laid. Please. This whole idea that we also have silk down baby hair, like, girl, this is exactly why I left the natural hair community. Y'all be annoying. <laughs> All right, the good sis Beyonce Giselle Nose Carter was snubbed at the Emmys. Uh, did y'all see Homecoming? Did y'all watch it? Because I done watched it about 50, 11 times. That was the, you know, not only was the, the Coachella show itself amazing but the netflix documentary and the camera like showing all the work her camera guys did to catch those angles to get two nights between the, the this is the artistry of all the pieces coming together the dancers the band the backup singers the camera guy going up and down the stairs to be able to sync two different performances together so effortlessly for them to lose to james corden the british guy who be doing the karaoke car karaoke You white people are trash. <laughs> but Beyonce dropping Halloween pictures from last year. This also, if y'all watch the um the making of the gift, the album she did for The Lion King, they aired the making of it on ABC. All them shots of Rumi and Carter are from a year ago. Them kids a whole two, two, and it, how, well, it was June, June, July, August, September. So what's that make them? 27 months? They bigger than this now. They talk a little bit more than the little cute roars Rumi was doing in that video. She's so private. She like, it's like, it's Peak Mill of Virgo too. Peak Mill be pulling the same stunts, putting up a video from a year ago of her two daughters. Like, hm, none of your business. <laughs> And being that kind of private really takes a good bit of conscious effort and work. And so I really do applaud it. Because a lot of us just want to show everything we got. And we'll be able to keep it together. I aspire to this, but I doubt I'd hit it. But she was dressed as Lisa Bonet. From, um, who was most popular from, well, dating, dating and having Zoe Kravitz with Lenny Kravitz. But also from The Cosby Show. Which I believe aired 36 years ago today. Hmm, how odd. I feel like that was intentional. Okay. If you have been not, if you have or have not been following the Takashi Six Nine court case, sis, scroll this Inner City Press guys. Is and his name is at Inner City Press on Twitter. You gotta scroll his TL, cause sis, I don't really care nothing about New York rap scene. I don't care nothing about that artist who became famous through Payola to the Shade Room. Aggy as fuck, annoying as fuck. I don't even believe in a carceral state, but good riddance, Negro. Whatever, I'm not here for it. But he um, basically snitched <laughs> over three days in the trial of two of his former co-conspirators. So, I ain't got no picture of the rainbow. 
Nicki Minaj has a video with him, a music video with him. I don't know why she can beef with all the women coming up in the rap game, but work with Takashi 69 girl. Please get your choices together. But he essentially went on the stand to talk about the Trey Way, which is a component of the blood gang in Brooklyn out of the Smurf houses. I was trying to like, I was reading the article trying to piece it all together because I'm like, is this, is the Smurf houses off of Fulton and through or Kingston? Isn't there a set of, pro it, like, are they further into Brownsville? So like Patches. I feel like it was, like, there's Project Houses, not at through, what's the next block after going east? Right off of Fulton. I think that's the neighborhood they're talking about. I used to live off of Throop in Fulton, so that's why I was trying to figure it out. Because I was like, you know, some of this stuff looks real familiar. Um, but apparently, you know, Takashi was the way that the gang was making their money, so they allowed him to troll the internet using their lingo and their signage because they were taking a cut of all his money. And this whole clip, they asked him in court, who is Jim Jones? He says, a retired rapper. Is he a member of Nine Trey, the blood gang? Yes. My nigga was just snitching up and down. You know, I don't, I try to stay away from using the word snitch because I don't think it's wrong for people to participate in investigations when they are when their community is facing violence i think it's i will use the term snitching when you participate in said activity and then for your own benefit turn on everyone which is essentially what 69 is doing because he has his own case um but the shade coming out of this and red velvet cake is just chocolate cake with food coloring this should have me on the floor because it is <laughs> He was just spilling all the tea about this damn gang. He was giving all the details. Like, I don't understand what that word is, but yes, I lied about how much money I made. Yes, I framed my own kidnapping. Dude was a mess. Yes, I paid the shade room. He didn't say all that, but he should have. They should have asked him how much he paid the shade room for them to constantly post him. Because nobody likes his music. The music is horrible, bruh. It's just bad. And I don't know how this is happening. This one from Corey. Breaking news, Takashi 69 reveals who the stranger was in Tamiya's house. <laughs> if I could sing, I would sing for y'all, but y'all want to hear me sing. I ain't got no, I can't hit no notes. Girl, nah. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Okay. I think that's all I had for, oh, no, it's not all I had. You know what? I'm missing some things. Hold on. And I, ooh. I'm going to look at the comments in a minute and then we can go through them. But that's not everything I had because I meant to, didn't I put my shit in here for? Oh, here it go. Ooh, not me, bitch. For Houston. Okay, global warming. Global warming has what was what was what was Houston's little catchphrase nickname? Like Charlotte's the Queen City. The Bayou City? Is that Houston? Girl. Houston done flooded again. I had to text all my friends. I'm I'm getting texts from people because people can't never keep up where I live. Are you still in Texas? No, girl, I've been living in Charlotte for a whole year now. A whole year. We will do a video on our thoughts on Charlotte. Um next week but uh charlotte's flooding again i hope to get more memes like this because the people of Hu not charlotte houston houston has flooded again and i hope to get more memes like this because the people of houston are some of the most colorful creative people i have ever met in my entire life and i love it but girl it wasn't even a full it's not even a full hurricane it's like a tropical storm has hit or like the residue it's not even a full tropical storm it's like the residuals of a tropical storm have flooded the city and this largely just has to do with infrastructure and I said this in the video I did about Houston what it's been four years now where I talked about like you know I I I was indifferent to the city of Houston because I was going through a really rough period in life at that time but 
I just, I couldn't stay because I lived through like one little flood, like a little hurricane in Houston. And I was like, water can't be this damaging. Like, this is terrifying. And the way the city is built, like there is just way, and I say this every time, there is way too much money in Houston. Houston is a wealthy city. This is, you know what I mean? This is not a city that's at a loss. So for them to build the city the way they built it without giving care to the fact that every year there is some sort of flooding i just don't i don't get how highways are built down underground like i don't get this shit but i'm gonna pray for y'all i hope the bayou city you know that y'all can get through this and uh and, and carry on my peoples carry on oh look You thought, you thought you was going to come up here and try to slander a hoe. Alright, so for everyone asking about my lipstick, my lip gloss, it is Oatmeal Raisin from NYX, their Intense Butter Gloss, one of my faves, love it. Um, the chat is going a little slow. But, no, it's not stop. You can. I just put someone in timeout. Alrighty. I've been doing this. Oof, I did that whole pop start in 40 minutes. Look at me. I'm doing so good. I, I hope y'all enjoyed this pop snark. I'm trying to get look through these comments because they're moving. Oh, the savage! I haven't watched it. I do have Amazon Prime, um, but the way that this pop snark is set up, I can do these a little bit more frequently because I have like I'm capable of setting this thing up and it's going well for me here. Um, but I'm gonna I'm gonna end this here so it doesn't turn in to. An hour long video. We actually got it done in a reasonable amount of time. Thanks for watching. Be sure to, um, if you're new here, be sure to subscribe. Thumbs up this video if you had fun in the chat, if you had fun engaging. Did you like how this worked? Um, and of course, you can either leave a donation in the chat, that helps, or join the Patreon, that also helps a lot. So, whichever way works for you, I appreciate it. It helps me keep coming back to these. And thank you for all the compliments. I th thank you for all the love. I appreciate it. Are you going to address the pink pill video? No, because it would be too much shade. Because I've met her in real life. And I know way too much about her. Hmm. Ain't nobody got time for that. In my last Get Ready With Me, I talked about Jackiana deleting or deactivating her Twitter. That girl, you want to be watching my videos. You all are asking questions. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Have a great night. And I'm going to holla later. Tuesday.